We're in Westminster, Colorado. It's a suburb of Denver. And uh, behind me in the background is uh, Maxar. Maxar is uh, a leader in geospatial intelligence and uh, space operations. And you know, Jason and I were having a bit of a conversation the other day about um, what, I, what we try to offer is some specific information about how the control grid is laying out. There are a lot of people who talk about there's going to be a total control system and they might go into like central bank digital currencies, but generally they're not talking about the other infrastructure. And so I'm here to sort of point out where this stuff lives and some of it is in um, places like Maxar, this large building. Um, it's all predicated on geospatial intelligence and the critical aspect of having a unique digital identifier is to place us within a mixed reality metaverse. Um, the geospatial intelligence, they need to know where we are in very precise measurement at all times to situate us in relation to autonomous vehicles, um, projections of layered information onto the environment. And if that's, if we don't have the identifier, they cannot advance with their new uh, empire, which is this mixed reality, augmented reality world that they're building, which is sort of broadly understood as the metaverse. But it's not simply, it's not simply in a game or on a screen or in a VR headset. It's really uh, intelligence, uh, digital information overlaid across the entire world. Now, Maxar uh, was created from two companies in 2017, and they decided to relocate to Denver. Um, it was a combination of uh, McDonald, Detweiler, and Associates out of uh, Ontario and a digital globe. Uh, they are the parent company for several other geospatial uh, projects, including Radiant Solutions, uh, SSL Space Systems Laurel, um, and, okay, I think it's just those two. Uh, their clients include uh, large defense contractors and tech companies uh, such as Lockheed, uh, Boeing, Apple, and the Gates Foundation. And so when we imagine we're going to be hearing a lot more as we're sort of they're dialing down maybe on the pandemic narrative and dialing up on the climate change narrative, that they are looking to use geospatial intelligence to do predictive modeling, predictive modeling of the Earth, to do digital twins of the Earth, and to feed all of that data into uh, machine learning and prediction systems that they will use to well, they will say they're using it to save the planet, but really, in my opinion, they're using it to control uh, natural living systems on the planet within their set parameters. And those parameters are going to be defined by the Sustainable Development Goals uh, advanced by the United Nations, adopted in 2015. And those will be around, again, climate, but also such things as health, which is goal three. And we know that Early on, um, organizations like MacroEyes, they were using their satellite imagery uh, to make predictions about everything, not just linking to um, uh, rainfall or uh, removal of trees, but also to the point of vaccine uptake <coughs> in Africa. That was something that was discussed in the Harvard Business Review early on in the uh, lockdown timeframe. <coughs> um, so the data that they're giving, it's satellite data, it's earth imagery data, it's analytical data, um, and it's going to be feeding into these smart cities analytics. Jason first noticed this company uh, when we were doing a presentation uh, around digital learning, <coughs> and I had a slide on uh, geo, uh, geo in, uh, sorry, the U.S. Geospatial Intelligence Foundation. Uh, they are creating a, com a standardized community addressing uh, data analytics to, as tied to national security, and there are over 200 members. Maxar is one of those members. So once you understand digital identity and positioning space, both from a, a simulation standpoint, a prediction standpoint, but also um, creating digital twins and holographic representations of you in space. You, uh, the two of us, we were watching a short animated film called World of Tomorrow, which was an Oscar nominated short back in 2015. Um, and in it, there's this little girl and she, she becomes, she's reached out to through a device by one of her future descendants that is a clone of a clone of a clone. And this, this future her is reaching back to the, the original, the prime, 
uh, Emily Prime and talking about that there's going to be this great meteor and she wants to extract this memory from, from the little girl before the meteor destroys everything. But within this context, they're talking about uh, moving people as avatars into different places in the universe, but they have to get the coordinates just right, or you end up like in hyperspace nowhere and you just die. <laughs> and that's part of the, 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 the short is this, this um, you know, that people are popping off and they're, they're measuring in the wrong place and they're going into nowhere. And so I really think that echoes this geospatial intelligence. They need to know where we are, not just to track us, but even Within Werner Vinge's novel, uh, Rainbow's End, it's all about augmented reality. And this was written in 2006, and he's talking about how amateurs who are learning to wear their wearable technology haptic suits, if you're not very good about it, your avatar's feet will float above the ground. And the degree to which you actually seamlessly look like a human in the environment shows your skill. And all of that is based on geospatial coordinates down to very, very minute detail. So I think this is where this is all going. And I was just telling Jason as we were getting set up, <coughs> they're talking about um, offering solutions for the space economy. And I do think that, <coughs> sorry, increasingly, in a very strategic way, Trump was used to <coughs> make us think that Space Force was ridiculous. Um, but really the goal is to rule the Earth from space. And that the space agency programs, the Space Force programs are about using geospatial intelligence and satellite uh, surveillance to manage us from space. And we should not ridicule that. Um, even though it was set up that way to, to frame Trump as someone who made it look ridiculous, the Space Force, it's very real and very serious. And there's a whole lot of money going through these companies, which um, Jason says that this building has been here before um, Max are occupied it, but you can definitely see the satellite uh, space imagery that's built into this headquarters. So um, it's a pretty broad agenda. We're going to be going over to Boulder next and uh, talking about this a little bit more in the context of NIST and uh, time and frequency.